All right, so how much of this New Japan show did you see, and what did you think? Okay, so I only watched... So so, so for those... I mean, there was a lot, a lot, a lot of complaints about the, um, you know, the feed going out and things like that. So just so you know, I mean, the, the replay is up, and everything's cool on the replay. There's no problems... You, you know, if you bought the pay-per-view and you were really upset, you can watch the whole thing now and it's in pretty much, I mean, there's a, there's, it's, it's pretty much, you know, good. So I only saw the last two matches. Um, so, um, East, but I'm going to watch the rest of it uh, tomorrow. Ishii and Suzuki was exactly what you would think it would be. It was a, you know, it was just an Ishii Suzuki match and uh, really good storytelling, beat the shit out of each other. The negative is, is there was, um, they did a lot of headbutts and 80% of them were just working headbutts. The problem is, is 20% of them, you know, weren't. Um, and there was one that was really bad and that, you know, um, so that was worrisome. But it's Ishii and Suzuki, and they're going to do that. But, uh, it, you know, it just uh, kind of bothered me that they were having this incredible match. They didn't need to do it. They did it anyway. And that's what they do. Um, they don't protect their head enough there, and that's a bad thing. But uh, overall, just like, you know, they just firing away for the whole match. Just boom, boom, boom. You know, um, crowd pretty into it. Um, pretty, pretty darn into it. Um, and then Ishii won with a brain buster clean in the middle. They did the one counts. I mean, it was, it was like, it was the, I, I don't want to, you know, I mean, it was exactly, the match was exactly what you would expect and it, and you would expect a great match. So it was Ishii won with a brain buster. And the reason he won is because, um, in the ring right afterwards, Eddie Kingston, who was not on, on the, who did not wrestle on the show came out and basically said that, uh, you know, Ishii, you know, he put over Ishii saying that uh, Ishii was, uh, you know, a student of Choshu and Tenru, who are two of his idols. But, you know, Ishii's a New Japan guy, and he's a King's Road guy. King's Road being the Misawa, Kobashi, Kawada era of all Japan pro wrestling in the 90s. So um, he tried to do it like that thing, but, you know, just put over Ishii and, you know, everything like that so they're doing the match on may 14th in uh washington dc um they're doing so it's going to be ishii and eddie kingston brody king against suzuki um and john moxley against tanahashi which we'll get into in a second so the um the moxley and will osprey match was was fantastic um Double juice. I mean, the only thing was, it's like the crowd was on its feet, but it was almost like like it didn't have, at points, like the crowd was going absolutely nuts. But at other points, um, for whatever reason, they weren't. But it was just like, I mean, it was, it was, I mean, it was great. It was like, uh, I'm trying to think of like when when Moxley's best singles matches in AEW. Um, it was as good as any of them. I mean, it was it was close to match of the year, but the finish, which I don't know, I I, I didn't think that it was a botch, but it, it easily could have been. Um, Moxley hit the Death Rider, um, and it's actually two of them. Is the second one he did regular one and then a high angle one, and then. Uh, one, two, Osprey kicks out. The referee counts three anyway. And Moxley then just grabbed a choke, and Osprey kind of tapped out. Um, it was just weird. Um, you know, it was just kind of weird watching it. You know, because Osprey's gimmick from the Sabre match is that when he loses, it's kind of because the referees sort of screw him. So um, that's why I think it, it, it felt... It, it fits into the storyline, but it also could be... Well, that would fit into the storyline, but if, I mean, if he got screwed by the referee, but then he gets put in the choke and taps, I mean, 
it doesn't really play into the story because he was about to lose anyway. Unless the idea was he that he really wouldn't have tap- tapped if, if the match had been going on. I haven't seen it, so I shouldn't say anything. Okay, so the explanation of the tap is that the bell had already rung, so it didn't matter. I so see. He knew it, it didn't, so he knew it didn't matter. That's how they explained it. And Moxley did like uh, give the referee a paradigm shift, which is why I think that it was probably scheduled to be that way, unless Moxley, unless Moxley did it as an impromptu. Um, and then Moxley did a big speech about how incredible Will Ospreay was. And he knew Will Ospreay's super talented, but he thought he was kind of spoiled and coddled. And he's not. And he's he's a tough fighter. And he's got all kinds of guts. And, you know, Will Ospreay was asking for a rematch. And Moxley goes, he wants a rematch anytime he can get a rematch. And he goes, you know, Will Ospreay, you know, is like, uh, you know, I challenged, I challenged people from New Japan. And Will Ospreay uh, accepted the challenge, so I can't complain. He's got guts. Just really putting over Will Ospreay. Um, there was a sp- there was a spot. Okay, so right at the end, you know, there was um, Cobb and Aaron Hanare and Okan and um, I think, um, and then uh, what was it? The uh, Aussie Open, TJP. So they're all there, and. I just thought, man, they should all be... They're, they're all there in the ring. They should all be attacking Moxley, right, after he beat their guy. And they don't. So <laughs> I guess they're not going anywhere with it. But, uh, you know, especially after Aussie Open got, got so over earlier in the show. Those guys are great, by the way. My, I mean, they've been great for a long time. But uh, it's kind of like because uh, they haven't, you know, the, the pandemic and everything. They haven't been able to come here. They haven't been able to go to Japan. But... That's that's a real strong tag team unit there, but um, so they didn't do anything. So uh, Moxley does this big promo about how not all of the New Japan guys he feels have guts, and he goes, including some of the legends. And then he cuts the promo on, "I've been trying to get a match with Tanahashi for three years. He never accepts. So we can do it the easy way. He can accept the match in DC or." I'm going to grab him by the ponytail and drag him to D.C., and we're going to have the match. So they are, after all these all this time, they are, in fact, going to do uh, Moxley and Tanahashi, but it's going to be in Washington, D.C. for New Japan. It's not going to be on an AEW pay-per-view, so whatever. That's what they're doing. Um, and, uh, you know, they'll, they'll, I'm sure they'll have a great match. Uh, and, you know, so... Uh, Tanahashi's coming. I think Okada's coming to the United States soon as well. And uh, we'll have to wait and see how everything plays out. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work. Working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.